you're listening to the Energy is Love podcast. All right, all right, then, for the podcast. Maybe I'll do a voice the entire episode. I don't have a good name. That was a good Nandor. That's who immediately who I heard. Is it? I heard Nandor. It's definitely not who I was impersonating. Oh, well, look at that. Who were you impersonating? Uh, somebody else. Do you know who else? <laughs> no. I think it was Nandor. It was definitely Nandor. I'll take it. We're fans of what he we do in the shadows. He created your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Creepy paper. <laughs> Creepy paper. <laughs> so we're big fans of uh, what we do in the shadows. And if you're not, go watch it. Come on. Yeah, it's on Hulu. It's or, a, wait, it's not wait, on Hulu. I don't know it's where it is. It's on FX. FX? Yeah. Where do we watch it's it? It's on Hulu. It's on Hulu. Yeah. We that's, watch it. That's basically what Hulu. FX is. You do. <laughs> do what? Watch Hulu. <laughs> All right. This is not what the podcast is about today. We've been on vacation and the vacation went a little bit longer than we, well, truth be told, right? Our vacation was only a few days and we got a nice getaway up to the Smoky Mountains. Yeah. So we went up to Gatlinburg. Mm -hmm. Did you watch that funny reel I sent you about the lady that was talking about Gatlinburg? No, I haven't watched You'll the real show. But um, it was a cool- We're going to have to pod the pod, pod the pod, Jesus. Yeah, we're going to pod the Pause. pod. Pause. The podcast, <laughs> so I can catch up on reels because I love it when you send me reels. I love the idea of potting the pod. Potting the pod. So if you're not familiar with Gatlinburg, we weren't either. And we're not even going to attempt to try to describe it other than just to say it's an experience. And we had a wonderful time and we got to experience the great Smoky Mountains. Yeah. Had nice hikes. and Yeah. It was cool. We saw a bear. Saw bear at our so, cabin in the woods. Yeah, we stayed at this really cool little Airbnb up in the mountains. And it was the last night that we were there, right? We were yes. in the hot tub chilling and relaxing on the patio. And we heard some uh, rustling in the bushes down below. Which we thought we, it was our boys there. What, our boy right. and his friend that was out for a walk. Yeah. Turns out it that was, was on the uh, other side of the bear. A nice big black bear just having dinner. Yeah. Um, luckily, luckily. Just plants. Yeah, just plants. <laughs> it was a vegetarian <laughs> black bear. <laughs> And then he made an appearance up at the patio and hung out around the front of the cabin. And we were so excited. Yeah, it was a lot made of fun. all kinds of noises. <laughs> Luckily, we were all safe and All safe. happy. So that was our vacation. And then we got back from that with full intention to like record a podcast. And then. Well, you. you did you, I get. I, I didn't get sick then. No. No, you were good. I don't remember what happened. It hit you like the weekend because you went and taught. And... Yeah. So we just have been taking it easy. And taking a nice little break. And it dawned on me too, babe, that hmm. I don't think we've had a, uh, I think there was one other week this week or this year that we missed an episode, but it's, yes. you know, we, we've been busy. We get to miss episodes. We've been recording we get a lot to of have, podcasts. Yeah. Right? We do. We've been doing a lot of work, <clears throat> expanding and growing the business and being able to help more people and reach more people yeah. and all of been that We've been working jazz. with a lot of people. So I'm grateful for it's that. It's super fun. It is. We've got to go ahead. I was saying we get to like connect and talk to a lot of people. It's great. Yeah. I'm like if you're that. one of the many people that have reached out to us recently, thank you. Like we love getting to talk to people and yeah. interact with people and hear your stories and what you're going through and all these other kind of things. Don't ever hesitate. It's a it's a really big um like we're really grateful. Yeah. Right? I, I honestly genuinely enjoy being able to talk to people and help people and interact with people. And so it's been really fun to see and experience it as, as we've kind of grown and expanded and everything like that. So yeah. hopefully there's just way more coming our way and we think there is. So this episode is very specific. <laughs> I feel like we haven't recorded in a long time. Yeah. And so now I'm like all awkward and uncomfortable. I'm distracted. I have to say we we got some haters on social media. Which platform? Uh Facebook. Right? And they were like really really Was there like some... they they were straight up abusive. Hmm. And like so I'm a little sidetracked by that cuz I'm feeling and it's not just like towards us but other members in the group. So mm -hmm. we're going to have to like have to do some house we cleaning. Send out the police. Well, we're going to do some house cleaning because opinions are welcome. Different opinions are welcome. Mm -hmm. Abusive behavior is not. So I'm a little distracted on that because I'm like, this is where my mind. And I definitely wanted to talk about it. Talk about that. I just did. Okay. Yeah. So you're good? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like in all seriousness. I had to like get it out of my space. I'm feeling it. I'm like, yeah. Did you want to talk more about it? No. Okay. Are we ready to get into the episode? Yes. 
So this episode is going to be all about labels. And the idea is, I guess we're going to try to do our best to kind of, we don't agree on this topic. So that's kind of why we're doing it. Because truthfully, we agree on most things. Don't you think, babe? We have a pretty good track record. Right? We're pretty steady. We're and pretty, then... Every now and then we come across yeah. stuff that we definitely are on opposite sides of the fence on. And I don't know if this one is necessarily that, but we definitely have some differing, differing opinions. And when we say labels, we're going to have this big, huge umbrella to kind of cover and explain what we're going to talk about. And that is, we're going to... It's the pros and cons of labels, right? So the idea is we have a label... We have a way of identifying ourselves in some context. And like truthfully, we there's too many, <laughs> my brain is starting to go on overload. There's too many avenues to cover. So we're going to focus on a couple of different ones. But when I say labels and when we're talking about labels, we're meaning everything. Like everything that you use to define and structure who you are and your place in the world. And in relationships and just in the context of your own daily life. So it's everything from gender, it's everything from sexual orientation, it's your uh how you think and feel about yourself. It's, you know, I'm what I'm, job you have. Yeah, I'm this type of person, I'm that type of person. It's the labels that we use to just define our you mental identify. health. What you are, what you have, what mm -hmm. you experience. And so the idea being that they they have pros. There's good things about labels, and then there's bad things about labels. And we're going to try to discuss it as best as we can. First and foremost, babe, hmm. do you feel like that was a good, <laughs> or is there anything else that you want to add? Oh, I'm going to have plenty to add. What I mean is the good caveat, umbrella, explanation of what we're about to unpack. Is there anything else that you want to add to that? We'll just do it as it goes. Okay. When I first think of, like when this topic came up for me, and I'm like, oh, this would be a good one for the podcast. Mm -hmm. We had a reel that did pretty well. And what I mean by that is like, because we're creating content every single day. So if you follow us on social media, there's new content pretty much every single day. And that means that some of that content sometimes will land differently than others. And it's funny too, because it will land differently on different platforms. And we did a reel not too long ago about CPTSD. We did a podcast episode about it too. Like it's something that we talked about a lot on the podcast. We did some reels about it. And one of the reels kind of took off and it got like over, I think it's like over a quarter of a million views or something like that on Facebook. So a lot of people had a lot of things to say about it. And one of the things that stemmed from that, especially down in the comments, if you get into the comments of it, there were people that were not arguing, but we're basically going back and forth, articulating that CPTSD is really just BPD, which is borderline personality disorder. And, and, and I didn't know this either. I don't know if you knew this, but I learned after the fact, after we did all of that stuff about CPTSD, that it's not actually recognized by like the board of psychologist people that you know, release the DSM each year and like it's not recognized as a quote unquote diagnosable mental health thing. So that's why. I how is that, that diagnose? How? Okay. First of all, I didn't know that. Right. I didn't either. And second of all, I'm not surprised. Yeah. I think <laughs> like if but how are they diagnosing people as it? I don't think they are. I think it's just mm -hmm. one of those terms that's used in society and in culture and it's like not from my perspective or like i'm hearing like clinical licensed therapists psychologists they're using this term they're using a diagnose diagnostic term well labeling with it so they, i'm really confused yeah it, it's it's because it's, I don't know if DSM is the right term, but there's that I know that book. book that you're talking about. I never remember what it's called. If it's not obvious, we're not therapists. Yeah, we're coaches. <laughs> we're not therapists. We're not psychologists. We don't have PhDs other than in like shadow work, right? We don't... We don't claim to be <laughs> yeah, either. We're, we don't, we're not claiming to be. But that's not important of whether or not CPTSD is... Well, it's... Interesting. Well, you bring that up at this point, and I'm like, that's a whole other spinoff of the way. There's so many things like PTSD is a new um, condition that's in the book too. 
PTSD was something that wasn't believed or diagnosed or even like that happened, I think in the, oh my gosh, I don't want to get the dates wrong, so I'm not going to, but it was in uh, our lifetimes. Really? Right. Or maybe just a little bit before, but our lifetimes, I believe that that came out as an actual diagnos- diagnostic condition. Mm-hmm that it was out there saying, this is what is happening. These are cause and effects. And they weren't being labeled with this thing and and having a trauma response. It was, nope, they're psychotic and just need to be institutionalized and like these horrific ways, which is why also was really hard for people to go into that diagnostic because it wasn't a, oh, this is a trauma response. This is, you're crazy. Yeah. And you are unstable and you are not safe to be in the public. You are a danger to yourself and others. You are, you know, all these horrific things. You're like, I'm actually having a trauma response and I'm not a danger to anybody. I'm just trying to figure out how to not see the trauma that's happening. So I'm, I'm not surprised, but I'm really surprised. Like, come on, right. still. Well, it's like Anyways. anything else, right? Where I am. Really, really fighting the sneeze. I know. You might have to talk. And keep okay. going. Well, hold on. Hold on, everybody. Everybody, wait for it. So, <laughs> so that's where this conversation is coming from. Was uh, it made me start to think about because people will like we grab a hold of a label, and it suddenly becomes a defining characteristic that we shape the narrative of our life around in both positive and negative ways. So like just this conversation that we're having right now about BPD and CPTSD and PTSD and all the labels that exist, all the acronyms that exist to describe mental health are things that people will grab a hold of and use. And use isn't like in a manipulative way. It's just how they define themselves. So they'll they'll use the label. I guess I can just speak from my own experience. You should because I have my own. So over the course of my life, I feel like at some point, and we've talked about this before in the past, but back in my 20s, I went to therapy a handful of times and I was working with a really good therapist that I liked. And he was he was one of those LCSWs, right? He mm-hmm. had a label, right? He was a licensed clinical social worker. He was not a whatever the other labels are. And so he couldn't diagnose me, but he basically, over the course of us working together for a long enough period of time, he's like, you're probably this. And the term was cyclothymia, cyclothymic, right? Which, like we've talked about this on the podcast before, I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of it, but it's like essentially just a a milder, milder version of bipolar. And so I remember when that happened, suddenly I had a label to like go back and look at the course of my life under, right? So I could see how I could frame everything that I had gone through and experienced up to that point, as well as how I was behaving and acting at that current point in my life, now through the lens and through the label of that. So it gave me uh, more compassion for myself. It gave me a greater understanding of myself. It kind of gave me a new context and um, just lens and perspective to kind of view myself in the world around me. That was 15 years ago, I guess, right? How old am I, 42? Yeah. So that was like 15, 16 years ago. And I I didn't hold on to that label. It wasn't something that I carried with me. It wasn't something that I like identified as or I classified myself as. It didn't really change the way that I viewed the over, um, like the overarching me, I guess, right? As I kind of present in the world, it was more about just a, um, a momentary thing. So I didn't move forward in life from that point thinking that I was cyclothymic or that I had bipolar. I just used it in the context of that moment to kind of framework everything. And I did carry it for a while, meaning, I don't know how long, months, years, but it also didn't really influence and shape how I, I feel like I moved through life consistently. Meaning it wasn't because you'll see people that will suddenly become, they will become that label. They will be, they will embody that thing where they become all about that. Right. And I guess the other really big caveat that we should have had at the very beginning of the episode is 
we are going to do our best throughout this episode to speak from a place of non-judgment because truthfully, I'm not judging anybody for what they're holding on to or not holding on to or releasing. Do you know what I mean? Like everybody just gets to have their human experience however they choose to. This is strictly just an observational kind of episode of the pros and cons of what labels can and can't do for us. So are you, just to like clarify, you're expressing your experience with labels and like how they have affected you and your take on them, basically. Not how anybody else should have a take on them. Yeah, right. Definitely not how anybody yeah. else. But I think that this is what I see. And, and you have opinions. And, and I have opinions yeah. and thoughts on the matter, right? I feel like that one specifically about cyclothymia and being bipolar mm -hmm. was one that I didn't hold on to, but I've held on to plenty of other ones, Yeah, right? I've grabbed a hold of a label and let it define me for extended periods of my life. One of them is broken, right? Yeah. I've thought that I was damaged for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. So like that's, that's a subconscious label that I've placed upon myself or that was placed upon me in a way that I went ahead and made my own. And that has shaped and defined me in a really big way over mm -hmm. the course of my life and my actions. And so that's kind of the context of what I, I kind of want to discuss is how they can be really beneficial and they can be really detrimental. Right. You can empower upon, yourself with them or people can cut you down by labeling you. Yeah. Yeah. So what comes up for you right off the bat? Um, maybe right off the bat isn't accurate, Right off the bat. <laughs> well, it's just like the different ways. Like I have, like there is that switch, you know, that back and forth. I think there are like markers, these identifiers, these labels that bring like almost some peace at times, right? You're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. I can connect these dots. I have been trying to, and a lot of it comes from trying to fit labels that you're not too. So while well, you have these things that come up and you're like, that makes sense. Now I can identify as this. I have, this feels like me. And it comes from not feeling like yourself because of these labels that you were supposed to conform to. And then anything other than the, I don't know, anything other than the, you know, very biased textbook, what you should and shouldn't be is, um, what an anomaly or something there's something that you are offset for and so there's a lot of freedom and not having to align with society's very unexpressive label and expectation and then there's also like there can be like it can be very liberating very liberating and healing and it can also be very damaging and um can really like trap you in like, like diagnosis is right. You can get a diagnosis that then you absorb into your soul and you're like, this is it. There is no other option for me. This is it. I'm done. And that can affect you so hard that there's been people that have been misdiagnosed and still succumbed to the diagnosis because our bodies like succumb to these labels yeah. onto, so they can be very, very harmful and then shameful thinking like, as you were saying, like labels that were given to me and how harmful they were. And then to where you try and find out who you are and then feel like you, you don't have room outside of a label. You have to be this. And if you identify with this and there's no room for more, it's like, nope, you're this. You can't change your mind. And if you change your mind, then you don't really, you know, there's just, there's always judgment that comes. So I think, I don't know, I guess right off the bat, my biggest takeaway is it's nobody's business what your labels are. And if you choose to share it with them, like you don't get to make anybody feel bad for it kind of a thing. Right. And then like, I don't know. And then I would also encourage people to be like, you're more than a label that somebody gives you. So is it is it a liberating thing? And I don't want to take liberation away from somebody. And is it a suffocating thing? And I absolutely want to be like, you can like shed this from you. Right. So it's so convoluted. 
and it's different for every person, every experience, every, like, we can't begin to know what it feels like for this person or the next. We can only, so it's so hard to say, like, right off the bat, I don't know. It's such a broad way to say something that is so completely convoluted and big. How's that for right off the bat? <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I, the thing that I notice, especially in culture, right, and when we're, like, online and looking at stuff and scrolling on, through social media and everything, it's how much we do want to place everybody into those boxes and then find the one that we fit into. And then when we do find that box and we find that place, then depending on the person, also depending upon where that person is at that time in their life, because it's always like everything changes, right? The thing Mm -hmm. that you identify with now isn't the thing that you identify with later. Right. And And that gets to be. That does get to be. But. But it doesn't. Right. Like there's so much criticism and judgment around so many of these things where if, it, if you identify this thing or if you label yourself that way, and it, like, again, we're not just talking about mental health. We're talking about like Democrat, Republican. We're talking, um, I mean, the, introvert, just, extrovert, just as right? simple as that. Like you there's know? so many different things that we use in order to kind of define our existence. And it's, there's a part of me that sees it as hilarious. Right. Like just in this really hilarious kind of outlook on life and how all of these humans are running around trying to be like, I'm this human, I'm that human, I'm this, I'm that. And like, this is the way that I kind of think about it. Do you think that trees think that they are (laughs) like, do you think the oak tree looks at the maple tree and thinks that's a maple tree or the redwood looks at the aspen and thinks that's an aspen or do you think the trees just see a tree like my guess is trees are like hey tree what's up tree good to see you tree as opposed to humans that are like we don't say hey human we say hi man or hi woman or do you know what i mean we have to classify the person and the experience and then the person has to be classified within themselves as well as opposed to just being a tree um so it's like right off the bat, are we able to just separate from all of these labels, let them all go for a moment and acknowledge first and foremost, ah, a human, I see another human. Well, the problem I see with that mm-hmm. is that I don't think p- people are treated like humans. I think that they are treated very poorly. And if they're, it's not... It's not so much the label. It's like people have to come in and say, no, that label that you say for yourself is incorrect. I say you're this. So I say what you should be and identify with. And if you don't, that's a problem. And I will only treat you like a human if you fit into this box that I say. And I have like, so I don't, I don't agree with that. Like, so I'm like, that's the conflict. If if we were to treat everybody lovingly, then maybe there wouldn't be a need because we would just know who we were inside and wouldn't have to take stances. But because people aren't treated lovingly and then stances, I don't know. So I, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. Well, I, I guess that's what I was saying. I see it from this hilarious standpoint where, because truthfully, that's how I kind of, there's a part of me that sees it that way, where we're just humans pretending yeah. like we're not, right? It's a bunch of people running around and being like, look at me, I'm so unique. And then we're like, yeah, but you're just a human. Like if the, I, the metaphor of like the trees is really standing out with me, right? Where it's like, look at me, look at me, you're a tree. And that's not a bad thing. It's not a negative thing. It's not like you're just a tree or you're just a human. But it's, it's like th- you're a beautiful tree. You yeah. are a unique, beautiful tree. And I love you, tree. Right? Like it's okay. it's an amazing, beautiful thing, okay. but it's kind of comical to me to see it from above and like... What I mean by that is I'm not placing myself on some higher platform (laughs) looking down below. I'm just talking about from like the thought experiment of seeing everything kind of from this different perspective and recognizing that like we use these labels in order to, I think, make ourselves feel safe, right? 
in order because it's like mm, i don't know about that a lot of times labels are what makes us like vulnerable going against what makes us safe what would make us safe would be conforming and saying that i am different makes us not safe so i don't i don't quite see it that way well what i meant was if we think about the labels in the in the context of how we're talking about it okay I think at the core, the the reason a label exists, the the reason that we would classify us differently than the next person, is so that we then fit into a group with this group. Is right? it is it fit? Okay, okay, so a, I see that. I'm going to say like feel at like, home. Because if we think but... of, exactly, we feel at home, yeah. right? If we think about tribal uh, existence, um, we are this tribe and you are that tribe, even though. We're all just trees still. Well, there's some tribes that treat other tribes nice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying, though? Um, like I'm we don't, trying. Yeah, but we, we don't have to. <laughs> I'm trying. I just I see it so differently. You know, I don't like. I think it just really comes. Oh gosh, um, it really comes to. Is there some butterfly out the window or something? Um, yeah, I'll tell you later. Um, okay. I'm distracted. Pull my pull my attention back. You're here. Pull my attention back. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I'm trying to like. I very much got pulled. It's. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the only reason I was bringing it up and describing it that way was <sighs> basically articulating how I see it on one level. Okay. Well, so what about other levels? Do you see it? So on like on the other. So if we look at it from that zoomed out level, we're all just humans running around pretending that we fit into all of these different boxes in order to feel safe. And then we come down to this level where we're doing that, where we're running around trying to label each other and label ourselves to see where we fit and then find our place. Mm -hmm. Like that is what I believe is the root under like the meaning behind all of it is we're trying to give context to this existence so that we really feel safe because truthfully, like this is another big part of it, babe, at least from my perspective, right? Truthfully, we're trying to give context to the unknown, right? We're trying to make the unknown this really great big thing that life is, right? It's this massive question mark. Who the fuck are we? Where the fuck do we come from? And what the fuck are we doing here? Yeah. That we can't understand or figure out. So let's just go ahead and make it really small and put it into different boxes and then label those boxes <sighs> to feel safe finally. Okay, yeah. I'm a man. No, you're a tree. And like, nope, I'm a male tree. Is <laughs> right? Like all the different things that I will put on myself, fully labeling myself in order to give structure and framework to my existence. And then I think that structure and framework that you give to your existence is influenced and shaped by your perception. And your perception is influenced and shaped by your experiences over the course of your life. So you will have different labels over the course of your life that will be positive and negative based off of where you were at. Like it's like the theme of consciousness things where wherever you were at would then shape the labels and also your relationship to those labels, right? Because there's plenty of times where somebody would have said, you're bipolar and I'd give a fuck you. We're ready to fight. Or they would say, you might be bipolar and be like, oh, interesting. Maybe they... But why do you need to hear it for like it, other people like don't have the power you know what i mean i mean they can help you along the journey but like people labeling you if somebody came up and they're like this is who you are right like and that's that's a problem yes it, it, the problem is this is who you are says me this is who you should be says me mm -hmm. is like where i think so much of the problems and issues are and we're not interested in, we ha are putting people in boxes. We're like, I need to make sense. So I'm going to give you like these labels that fit okay for me. And then you have to check them off to be in my, and there's just so Ooh. much like, so people are like, okay, well, I'll take a little bit of this and a little bit of that. This is where I don't, I don't know. I just, there. Do you feel like, this is interesting. Okay. Do you feel like the labels that you carry mm -hmm. and the ones that you will just say identify with or agree with or the ones that you're like yeah this is how I see myself right okay do you feel like those are really yours or do you feel like those are just the ones that were placed on you both 
I think that the ones like it's much harder to embody the ones that you really connect with. Like the courageous are the ones that do that. I think to a point of saying like, this is me as opposed to feeling weighed down or conforming to the labels that were given. So I feel like there's a part of me that identifies more with labels that were given to me. And I'm still trying to figure out, like, I'm trying to uncheck the boxes that were checked for me. And so I can get curious about where and like what mixture is me because I don't fit everywhere, but I fit more places than I'm allowed to fit. And I don't fit places that I'm supposed to fit. Or told to fit. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, and a lot of problems have been like, and it's not, it's like, this is who you are. This is who you're supposed to be. And even like some accepting like, well, this is it, but this isn't like, you're not allowed to be or keep that to yourself. There's just so much like I have. It's such a love hate with labels, really. It's such a love hate. And like there are, I don't know, because it's both hands. Like I think everybody gets the right to be who they are check whatever boxes they want to check, uncheck them, recheck them, uncheck them, recheck them, figure it out. As long as you're here, you're still figuring your life out and you get to, you get to change and stay the same as much as you want. But it's, I also think that when we get these labels, we don't allow growth because we're like, no, this is it. I'm holding on to this and you can't take it away from me. And it becomes like our um, what's the word? Like we make that like our, our purpose, our destiny, our everything there. If there's no, like I, I will always be this and I can't ever change my mind or, you know, good and positive too. You can be like, I will always be me. I am always like, I'm going to be happy with who I am. I am, whether I was, I don't agree with the label you gave me. So I'm giving myself this and I'm going to hold on to that. And I think absolutely. But from my perspective, my judgment, right, I think if it's hurting you physically, emotionally, in any way, if it's like making you feel less than or limited, then I would encourage you to let it go. And if you need to hold on to that, you know, that's your journey. I see it as let the limit go. Let the feeling less go. Let the feeling of like conformity and like the gel cell, the like pulling you down, let it go. But if it's liberating you in any way, if you're feeling more powerful, if you're feeling like moving forward and stepping into yourself and help, like, why would you let that go? If you want to hold on to it, hold on to it. Hurting other people for labels, hurting other people because they don't conform to you is such, I have a really hard time with that. And I, I can, I should do better at trying to see those point of views because if I'm like drawing my land line in the sand of that's not acceptable, then I'm doing the same thing, but it's really, really, I'm really struggling. I'm really struggling when people are like, this is who you should be says me. This is who you should be says this like story. Yeah. It was interesting. Like we were talking about earlier about that reel right on CPTSD because you would have people there was somebody in the comments that had, you know, basically said CPTSD was only for people Combats. that have gone through combat, right? Because mm -hmm. it was combat, uh, I think he, like the term. Combat post-traumatic stress right. disorder. So that was his understanding yeah. of what it was. And then you had all of these people that were, attack is too strong mm -hmm. of a word, but that they were basically telling him that he was wrong and mm -hmm. that, you know. And that's how he had it explained, right? Exactly. This is combat. That was his perspective, right? right? And in his experience, that was important. And that, like, and that's then it's the also really hurtful when it's like, this is more than just vets. Yeah. You know? For him, right? Well, I mean, so it's like both, right? There is, it does include everybody, but there are, obviously, there are um, traumas that are very different experiences. They're both traumas. And so we get, no, you can't have this trauma. This one's mine. Right. This is. A... We experience it so differently. Mm -hmm. And they're yeah. both like any, any trauma is a trauma and it is valid. 
But that's not where we're going. We're going into trauma, <laughs> not labels. I see what you're saying. That, I don't know. No, we're going into labels, not trauma. Did I say that backwards? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> says you. So like lately, and I say lately meaning like relative, right? In the last couple of years or whatever, you and I have gotten comfortable labeling ourselves uh, ADHD and neurodivergent and kind of comfortable... Uh, is, do you think comfort's too strong of a word for us? I'm, Should I just speak for myself? Yeah, try speaking just for you. You get your labels. <laughs> you know, the fact is I label us uh -huh. like it's comfortable for me to say us, meaning you and me, obviously, uh -huh. right? And that's a, like, that's a box. That's a thing that makes me feel safe. Yeah. Because then it's like... You know, my, the experiences that I have or the things that I think, or even just this thing that I talked about, right? ADHD mm -hmm. or whatever makes it, it's easier if it's us, yeah. like you're in it with me. And so I'll, I'll do my best to speak just so. Well, I think that like goes to what you've been saying before too. And like the feeling safe and how these yeah, things. Yeah. That's what I'm saying is like, I think labels in general are just that, right? Yeah. It's giving us a way to feel safe about this thing that we don't know. Like at the core of it, I think it comes down to what is all of this? We don't really know. So let's just try to do our best over the next gazillion years to label it a thousand different things so that each individual person can feel safe in their little corner of the universe, right? But back to what I was saying was the last few years, I have gotten comfortable understanding and labeling myself and i will also articulate it like with the outside world meaning sometimes like when it comes up in conversation or I'll, I'll have a conversation about it like i just had a conversation about this the other day with a friend where i was talking about recognizing that because i this awareness came up with, you know i shared this with you two several months ago where it was like i had this story in my head that i was this really big loser and slacker because i could never maintain a job and so I went through the course of my entire adult life, like from 16, on, 16 onwards, right? When I started getting jobs, I would quit them almost immediately. So I would work a place for three months and then quit. And it wasn't like, let me put in my two weeks notice. It was straight up like I'm walking off this fucking shift, taking off my shirt. Here you go. There's my badge fucking out the door. <laughs> and I've done that my whole life where... I don't even know if I've ever technically given like a two weeks notice and then actually lasted that entire two weeks. Um, but that was a way that I identified myself and labeled myself. And then I had this new construct come in and replace that label <clears throat> of just being a fuck up and a slacker with, oh my God, I totally have ADD. And I'm like I'm on this neurodivergent autistic spectrum where of course I'm not gonna be able to like sit in a cubicle and answer the phone every day for eight hours, right? Of course, I'm not going to be able to do this super menial, repetitive task over and over and over again. Like, because of the way that I am designed and the way that kind of I am just simply operating this meat suit, then now I have this label of ADD and uh, neurodivergent. It's like, oh, that makes total sense now why I couldn't ever keep a job. So then it immediately relieves all of this guilt and shame that I had been carrying since I was like 16 years old. Mm -hmm. Like to have this story and this definition of who I was and this overwhelming sense of, like I said, shame. And like truthfully, it's been this really heavy thing that I've carried. And it's a story that I've told myself over and over and over again. And then I replace that label with ADD. And so it's like awesome. It's alleviated and it's made me feel better about my place in the world. And it's helping me from my perspective on my healing journey. So that label made me feel a little bit safer in this unknown of like, why am I fuck up? Why am I this way? Like, why am I the way that I am? Right. And I'll give it some structure and some label in order to just sit with it. So I'm happy that I have this new label that I can now run everything back through that has shifted my perspective about my life. And then I'm also curious <clears throat> because I think about like setting it down. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, maybe I, maybe I don't need to carry around this idea that I'm ADD all the time. And what's really funny is my therapist, uh, 
this was what he was always trying to get me. Cause I would like every call I'd come on and I'd be like, I think I got this. I think I got this. And he's like, yeah, I mean, maybe like, what if you don't like, what if that's just being human? Like, what if that's just the experience of life where sometimes you have this thing and sometimes you have that thing and everything shapes and evolves over time. So at some point I'm sure I'll look back and I'll be like, man, I'm so grateful that ADD helped me see all of these things and experience my life in the way that it did. And then it helped me give context to all of that later on in life when I really uh, recognized it. And then I also was able to eventually shift out of that and let that go. Because that story of I was a slacker and a loser and a fuck up, I'm letting go. Like it's no longer this thing, this label that I'm carrying around to define me. Now I'm defining it with some other label, but it's a much more positive one and a much more empowering one. And then eventually... I'll set those ones down. And then of course, because I'm human, I'll pick up something else. Right. But I think at least from my lens and my perspective, and this is why I wanted to talk about this topic was like, I think eventually we have to set down all of those labels and just be like, Oh, I'm this spiritual thing. I'm this spark of love. That's continually spinning. Like I am, I am not the body. I'm not like all of that stuff that we know or that we're taught or that we learn or that we recognize, like eventually it's just like all of that is the quote unquote human experience. And I am not human. I am just embodying a human thing on a rock in space. <laughs> and that, that too is also a label. Like that's the really weird thing is I I there I think at some point we set down the I'm a spiritual being label as well. And that one's just like, well, what the fuck is that then? <laughs> like you just told me I'm not like there's like, something other. That's 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 the whole like that's it. Right. We, we, the thing that that's it that I'm supposed to get to, like that's yeah, that's a mind point. I I love how yeah. So that's why I wanted to have the conversation was because the the intention is it's safe to fill all of these labels yeah. and it's okay if you're like passionate about it. And it's like, even if you want to argue with people about it in the comments or, I mean, you see some people that, like you said, it defines them, right? Mm -hmm. Where they become the advocate for, you know, this diagnosis or this issue, or, you know, I'm now the advocate for adult onset ADD or <laughs> whatever, <laughs> right? It, it comes, it becomes the complete... Yeah we've done it. Like we're advocates for love. Like we're this thing that has defined us. I've done it. Sorry. I yeah. was lumping us in again where it's so human to yeah. do, I think. And the offering or the intention or the thought that, that we can just plant is maybe the ones that you hold closest, the ones that you're like, this is it. Those ones are the ones that should be questioned the most. Because I think those are the ones that are holding you back from where you are to where you want to be. Because think about it. All the really defining labels that we place on ourselves, like the ones that we refuse to let go of, maybe are the ones that really need to be let go of. Like I've been thinking about it in the context of like being a parent, right? That's a label. I mean, yes, there's factual evidence based upon blah, blah, blah that we can define. And now that we stamp that a label, say, yeah, you're a parent because X, Y, and Z happened. And now this is it. Oh, can I allow that label to then uh, let go of that to see what is next? Or am I going to carry that because, and it's okay, right? If I have to carry that label my entire life because it, it does bring me peace and love and a good feeling. That's okay too. But I, it's made me really question myself, not just question myself, but start to get really curious about the ones that I'm holding on to the, on to the most. Okay. And I think about that too when it comes to shadow. Like there are labels that we have for ourselves that are in the shadow that we have like a death grip mm -hmm. on. Like, go ahead and try and tell me I'm not a piece of shit, right? Or that 
like subconsciously try to tell me that I'm not worthy, like that I am worthy of love. I'll have a complete counter argument. Like that, that label that I have that I'm unworthy of love is like, it's almost like, you know, you can pry it from my cold dead hand. Good old Charlton Heston. <laughs> Sorry, babe. I've been talking a lot. I want to hear no, what you have to you say. No, you did so good. And I'm glad that like we got to that part where you were able to really flesh out what you were thinking and feeling and expressing all that. Because it was like... Did it make sense? It did. It did. And um, I like your point too of like getting curious about the ones that you're really holding on to. I, I would invite off like... And I'm not so sh- like my invitation would be to really get curious about how you're defining other people and the labels that you are forcing, whether actually forcing on people. Some people get pretty extreme with their forcing or even just like your behavior, your mannerisms in your mind, the way that you're labeling others. And those, I would say, get curious about those ones because I'm not so much sure you're like, no, I'm not so much sure that it's, um, (laughs) Jesus, there's one for me to look at. (laughs) Um, now I lost my train of thought. Dang it. (laughs) You're not so sure that, (laughs) um, I think if we didn't have to fight so hard to be who we are against people who say, no, you're this, no, you're this, then it wouldn't be such a hard thing. If we didn't have to fight so hard to say, I'm experiencing like, even with diagnosis, you know, this is happening and this is what my body's feeling. And then be like, yeah, that's not, there's nothing here. There's nothing to look at. Like being discredited and denied our reality, stop denying other people, their reality and be curious and listen because their reality is their reality. And who are you to say it's any different? So mm-hmm. watch how you're labeling others. And I think that one's huge. Yeah. I think that's a great seed to plant because I was going to ask you earlier on in the episode if we could like go back and forth with what we label each other. Yeah. And only from the perspective, not like in a <laughs> combative way, but in a curiosity way of like that most likely is probably in some ways and probably in bigger ways than we, you know, even really can grasp, it's stifling our relationship from where we're at now to where we actually want to be. Interesting. Because I think that, like you said, right, get really curious about the labels that you place on other people. Mm -hmm. And there is so much of like, I can look at the course of our relationship where I have been super guilty and still am guilty of labeling you up, down, left, right, sideways, every which way that you come. I got you figured out, right? Mm -hmm. And then I keep trying to be like, put you into that box that I can so clearly define you in. Mm. And yet all of it is just designed to make me feel safer. Yeah. Because there's a part of it too that's like, how do I sit before you without having some understanding of like who you are and what you are. Because in order for me to like open up and be vulnerable and show up in our relationship, I have to feel safe, right? In order to feel safe, then I have to kind of trust you. And in order to trust you, I kind of have to figure out who you are and what you are so that I have some context. And so then I do that in order to feel safe. And now it's like, are you willing to question that label? Are you willing to like let her not be that box that you've placed her in? I'm like, ooh. I don't know. There's a part of me that's like, absolutely. I never want to put you in a box and put you in a label. And then there's another part of me that can feel the resistance to letting that go. Right. And it's the same resistance, like the feeling inside of me, I can almost feel it in my stomach. And it just feels like this tightness suddenly. It's not expansive. It doesn't fill up my entire belly. It feels very much like a rope or a cord or just some sense of like, (laughs) <laughs> a chunk of me inside that just goes <clears throat> and twists just a little bit. And then the more I question it and lean into it, like it gets tighter and tighter. So I can feel that for myself when I think about what label am I willing to question about how I see myself in the world right now. And then it's the same thing with you where it's like, okay, what am I willing to let go of in regards to how I've labeled you? Right. That's a big deal. 
Do you want to ask you to take it a step further? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, of course. It's just something that came up. And if it resonates, it resonates. Um, So you mentioned how you do that to feel safe, right? Mm -hmm. And labeling me, having me figure it out so you understand. Mm -hmm. And how we've had like in the past confrontation, I'm like, that's not who I am. This Mm -hmm. is who Mm -hmm. I am. Is it having me figure it out or is it labeling me? Like identifying me or labeling me for how you want me to be? It's both. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So is it letting go of who? What What are you letting go of? Your idea of me or your? Desire of you. Yeah. Mm. It's both. Yeah. Yeah. Which one feels, does one feel like more prominent? Um. The only thing that I can speak to about that, like, does one feel more prominent? Mm-hmm. One feels more constrictive when I think about letting it go. Which which one is that? It's the one that I think I was speaking to first. The idea of yeah, like who like you it's think the, I am from it's everything what, you figured it's out. It's the one that I created for safety. Okay, you need to fit here because this is what I've right. Okay, and then like it's the simplest thing and. Like you're, are you, I'm checking in with you right now to make sure you're kind of comfortable in this conversation because we're um, like in the, I would have, I'm like, where are you going? Shit. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. But we're kind of in our relationship stuff right now. Yeah. And I mean, obviously we talk about our relationship stuff We go there from time to time on, time podcast, on this podcast. I just want to make sure that you're feeling okay. Um, I'm a little restricted. I'm a little I hadn't like. I noticed given your body language. <laughs> By the way, you're missing out if you're only listening to this. You should definitely go watch us on YouTube. <laughs> or not. <laughs> right. It's just the two of us and our nice little studio here. But it's, a, it's Suddenly a... I have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> so you're feeling a little restricted. I'm feeling a little restricted. I'm still participating in the conversation and I'm still here, but I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling a little restricted. And not like res- not, what's a better word? Because res- restricted makes it sound like you're restricting me. I'm feeling um I'm feeling a little protective of myself and a little uneasy. Yeah. And just. Do you have a sense of why? I was triggered coming into it. Oh, that's right. right. I right talked about that right off the bat. The so I've been trying to Facebook. be open and I've had that in the background that I know I'm not so supposed to, but I do. What's that label? Right. You're not supposed to let people affect you. And it's, it is us, but it's also people that have been vulnerable and shared stuff and they're like, that's an attack on them too. So I'm like, I can handle when it's us, but when it's going to make people that have been vulnerable feel bad, then I'm like, that's so my brain has been kind of like protection energy out there. And I'm still in the conversation here. So that is part of it. And then I've been triggered in the part of it. I'm like, what are you saying, Craig? What are you saying? (laughs) And then, of course, always you have this big heart that comes out. But sometimes I'm like, where, where are we going with that? You know, <laughs> like, and um, I'm insecure about some of my labels. And I'm insecure about not knowing enough of my labels. I'm insecure of not having enough sense. And then also feeling like, like I get confused with I've changed so much. and I'm continuing to change like what's real and what isn't, even though they're all real, like all of them, everything where I was in that moment is real. Even if I see how well that doesn't fit anymore. And maybe I can see now how that never was in the moment it was real. And so they're all real and every moment is valid. Right. And I'm still, I'm just a little nervous. So that's where all that is coming from. I'm here and I'm nervous. (laughs) I need a Tums for my acid reflux. <laughs> There's a label. <laughs> no, it's. I think it goes to what we're talking about, where it's like they, you carry them and you hold them and you, like, it's literally just a security blanket, right? We wrap ourselves up in this label. Or and, cement boots. Right? Yeah. And we, we, we carry it with us, metaphorically, in whatever fashion we do, right. until we don't anymore. Mm-hmm. And the until we don't anymore, oftentimes is because we replace it with another one. True. And that process like just continues onward 
right? We do it with like. But we're uh, supposed to, right? We're supposed to evolve. Yes. But a lot of times we shame. Like we are supposed to evolve, of course, right? I mean, supposed to. Supposed to. to. Right? How could there you even go. not, right? Yeah. It, a tree is always going to do what, right? A tree is always going to be grow. a tree. It's always going to grow. It's always going to grow, yeah. Yeah, so. Go through its. The, I don't know why I keep going back to trees with everything. You, you Ram Dassey, love the trees. I was yeah. going to. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So we carry it until we don't. And mm -hmm. like, that is what I really wanted to have come out of this episode is be willing to let the ones go that you think you can't, or even just get really curious about it. Yeah. Right. And that does not mean, I just want to clarify too, understand that does not mean that you're supposed to let it go and conform to a label somebody else is telling you. Yeah. That's and, not what you're saying. I'm not saying like I'm not labeling you for not letting it go. Like right. if you want to continue to hold on to the label for the rest of your life, that's totally okay. Like that in a, of itself isn't a bad thing. Mm -hmm. There is no good or bad here. I can just feel like literally I can feel expansiveness and I can feel constriction, constriction. right? Mm -hmm. And there's expansiveness when I think about the idea of letting go of the ones that I don't want to. Even though I can feel the constriction in my body, I can feel the potential for what exists there. Yeah. Because I think about like back to the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. Getting curious about how we have labeled each other. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting too, and this may be just a really, really good relationship building practice for, for what do you got? anybody. Like we could literally go through and talk about all of them. The yeah. ones like we could do. <laughs> I'm immediately like, <laughs> opt out. <laughs> <laughs> we could do two lists. The ones that we think the other person knows mm -hmm. and then the ones that I don't think they know. So the idea is I'm sure that there are some labels that I've placed upon you that mm -hmm. you're like, I bet you've labeled me this. I bet you've labeled me this. Do you know what I mean? The ones that mm -hmm. I think you think you know. And then there are some that I've probably placed on you that you would have no idea that yeah. I carry, but they're all mine. Has nothing to do with you, right? Yeah. Again, it goes back to that thing of like, how have I structured partner uh -huh. <laughs> in order to make my experience first and foremost the one that I desire and want and also how do I feel safe in this unknown experience right yeah. like you don't have to share your list of labels that you labeled your partner with with your partner it's so you can self-reflect on them that's what I'm saying I would share both of them I'm saying like what you're two, labeling we do two your lists. partner is for you to self-reflect on what does that make you feel does that make you I feel wanna, safe i want to know what does those that... are though yeah of course you do <laughs> so right there you have that was a label that just spoke <laughs> <laughs> so that part of you that Looks labels like my checklist is done now you know <laughs> Girl, of course you do meaning of course you would say that because I know exactly where that's coming from. <laughs> I'm not surprised I've heard that motherfucker talk for the entirety Aww. of our relationship. So. I think that I, I think it really does say more about you than your partner though. I do too. I think it's like, if you look at, you see the way that you're labeling, you're painting your own portrait. Exactly. I, I, and, uh, I totally agree yeah. that that's the other side of it. That like. You need to see your light and your dark. Yes. The positive qualities in them that you're seeing, that you're labeling, you're seeing the negative qualities. We'll take a look. Right. You know, it's your, it's your, your mirror yeah. on paper yeah. with labels. And so then are you willing to be able to acknowledge those and sit with those? Mm -hmm. And then out of those, mm -hmm. the ones that you don't want to let go of, mm -hmm. get the most curious. Right. Because I'm leading, I'm not leading anywhere, but this has really sparked the idea. It doesn't mean in my flipping mind. it to the opposite either. No. It right? just means letting go. I'm not like, well, if it's not this, then it must be this. If it can't be this, it's just letting go. You and I you and it, I have the done attachment this. to the identifying marks. Like this is the really big key thing to long term relationships is you have to allow for that person to change. Yes. And so. that that can right there, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. And that is tricky. Yeah. Because you do can like develop this like idea, this picture, this hologram right, the of label. them. Mm -hmm. And so when they change, like right. most of the time, like the, a lot of other people, but you, you're you still holding them in this way. Mm -hmm. This is how they fit. And it can be like both ways. They can like start to do unhealthy habits mm -hmm. that you don't see because they're here or they are healing unhealthy patterns and characteristics but you don't let them grow because you're still holding them here mm -hmm. like that can be a thing that is really 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 stifling for relationships 
I'm mm. glad you said that. Well, that's kind of what I'm saying is it's like if we could identify the ones that we've placed upon each other mm -hmm. and then look at them again from this perspective of like, okay, which one of these do I not want to let go of? Mm -hmm. Or which right. ones am I afraid? Like you said, I, I want to let go of, but I'm afraid that I can't. Right. And then if I'm able to let go of those, mm -hmm. it then frees my partner up to not like not literally freeze them up to then become the version of who they are, but it frees up my ability to see mm -hmm. who they are. It, it takes your restriction off of them. Right. So Unwilling, you like know. there is a Stephanie that I can't even see uh -huh. because I have placed labels and structure around you. And I know that there's sometimes like subconsciously you get, consciously at times too, right? You will get angry <laughs> with me because it's like, that's not who I am. Mm -hmm. I do the same thing. It goes both ways. Right. And there's been times that you're like, like you point out something, right? That I haven't seen mm -hmm. and you shouldn't have to do it this way. Right. But sometimes we, you know, we're growing people and sometimes it does take you doing this. And I feel bad for that, but I'm grateful you'll do it. Sometimes you'll be like, Hey, don't you see this? And then I'm like, holy shit. How did I not? Because yeah, I see that now. I don't know what that was in my head. I don't know why. Like that's where I went immediately. My ego popped out and said, it'd be nice if you do that with me. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, wow. That was so mean. I'm like, so... I'm sorry for that, but I wanted to speak to it immediately because I'm like, that's unacceptable. We're going to bring you into the light and speak to you right now. We see you. That's um, interesting. Right? Man. That was very interesting. So we're going to spotlight that. Be like, that's not okay. But um, to circle back, when you do that, I mean, there's times I see it too. And there's times I see you growing and you don't. Right. And you're like, I'm this, I'm this. I'm like, baby, let's look at some things here. Right. Like how amazing you are. Yeah, we totally And then you're like... Oh, <laughs> it feels so good when you do that. I try to do that for you too a lot. And yeah, I think I do, you do. like that feeling of like, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. You took that shit off a long time ago. Yeah, I actually am a pretty good mechanic. Like there's a whole bunch of different <laughs> things and it's not just like what a service that you can provide. It's like in your soul, mm -hmm. like there's you, you, we also get stuck seeing ourselves in the same hologram and not really seeing our change. Our progress, just like sometimes we don't see our demise. We're, we're spiraling down right. and we don't see it. We're like, no, I got this. <laughs> I can maintain. The <laughs> and your family is like, ah. I so, don't know if you realize. But. So it's that like we we hold, we get these like really, I think that's just like, so I'm seeing like these Star Wars holographic images coming up. And we place them. We have labels we place on ourselves and labels we place on others. And that's how we see them. And those labels are very closely, you know, they're our own labels. So what we're wrapping around ourselves and not seeing our growth, we're going to not see that growth in our partner where we are like restricting ourselves or expecting of ourselves. We're going to place that on our partners because those are our filters. So if we're like, those are our filters. Right. You know, that's what a label is. It's a filter. It's a filter. It's a way to interpret the world around you so that you yeah. feel safer. And then there is like taking filters off, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. There's going through that taken off that doesn't fit anymore. And yeah, I just think we're so much more. What do you feel like or what do you think is one label about me? About you? That you would be willing to get really curious about. And I'll do the same. I don't know that I'm going to say it. Okay. On the podcast. <laughs> like, um, let me kind think. Of the po point. Yeah, but I'm also like, I'm not going to, I'm going to be really open here. I'm like, I'm really open on the podcast and there's stuff that I don't need to say. For sure. Yeah. So you don't have to do those ones. Yes. We can save those ones for the, ep or off, off the air, but maybe one that you would feel comfortable sharing. Okay. Um, it's actually a big one. I'm going to really let go with the thing that you um how how would i say this i'm not, i don't have the fine tune of it now but i'm going to really sit with it and get curious of what 
this label actually is that I have on you so I can get curious about letting it go because it's sneaky. You heard my ego pop up earlier. I did this and she was like, I got something to say. (laughs) That was not nice, lady. Go take a seat, ego um, (laughs) label. I want to get curious about... um, Wow, come on. It's a big one because I'm going mind blanks. I also don't want to, like, I feel like it's too personal. Do you feel like I'm trying? I'm trying so hard, but it's so personal. Truthfully, does it feel like I've done that thing where I, I spark really difficult stuff to be fleshed out on the podcast? When You're it like, we be? need to say it all. Let's do the yeah. shock. Yeah. Um, like, if it feels like that, then we can just definitely transition. And... Oh, my ego's going to be like, it's absolutely that. <laughs> you did that. Bad on you. Don't have to do this hard thing. <laughs> Um, I'm going to let go of the way that I, it's, I don't know how to say it correctly. I'm, I'm getting curious about letting go of the way that I think you see me, letting go of the, the labels that I think you have, Mm. like thinking that I know what you are thinking about me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because I, I know that I'm not saying it right, but I can't quite get it because she's like, you're going to let go of that. I'm going that, to try. I picked a really fucking hard one. <laughs> that thought that you can see through my eyes. I don't think that I can see through your eyes, the world, but I think that I know what you're thinking negatively mm, about me. Let go of yeah. yeah. I also have to do the opposite, which means when I think you're thinking something really positive, I have to let that go too. I'm going to let go of the thought that I think I know what you're thinking. And I, did I pick an easy one actually? Cause I do it a lot. I ask you what you're thinking, Philly. I'll have something come up and I won't assume I'll ask you. So did I pick one that I'm already working on, but I still do it subconsciously really deep. So when you ask me what I'm thinking and mm-hmm. then I respond. Uh huh. Oh, because then I'm like, mm, are you sure? See, I don't always believe it. Yeah. So that, that's, okay. that's where the okay. part is. That I do a lot. You do. You're getting much if, better. If what you say fits what I'm feeling from you. Right. It, I mean, and not verbatim, but if I'm like, oh, I can, that energy that I picked up connects with what you said, then right. I'm like, okay. But if I'm like, mm, I'm feeling something a little more spicy than that, <laughs> then <laughs> I'm like, mm, somebody's telling a story. <laughs> somebody's trying to give me a uh, quesadilla. Right. But I feel uh, super hot. Right. Chili Rihanna will come in my way. <laughs> right. And I have to be careful because I'm not letting go of my discernment for my truth and safety in my space and honoring myself. But I'm very much going to work on letting go of like, this is how you are seeing me and realize that that might just be how I'm seeing me. Mm. Here we are at the mirror. Okay. <gasps> what do you got? That's why they call it Black Mirror. What do you got? What do you Netflix got? Netflix special. Don't do it. Baby, I'm trying really hard to deflect and move past I it. I know you are. Because halfway through that question, I thought, motherfucker, that question's really hard. It is really hard. Because I started to try to think of what I'm going to say. Right? And then I'm like. You couldn't even really hear what I was saying because you're trying to think of. Oh, I'm see, like, fuck, I already ones... did it. <laughs> <laughs> try again. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, yours is really big and I want to do that as well, right? Because it's really funny. I. I, my perception of what I believe your perception of me is two things. Okay. Did that make sense how I just articulated that? I think that? so. What you think I think about you. Yeah. Two different ways. Okay. God, that, if anybody else is confused, please call you, in and let us know. You used the word perception. It was very understandable. So. You're very clear. I think you either think I'm a piece of shit like scoundrel dog, worthless thing. Or I think you think like your perception of me is either really poor or it's this inflated sense of ego that doesn't feel true. And if we're looking at it from the lens of all of that is about me and nothing about you, right? then that tells me that that's how I see myself in those two extremes, either as a worthless piece of shit for whatever reason, right? Or 
some egotistical inflated windbag of bullshit. That's the same thing. Those aren't two spectrums. You're saying the same thing in two different ways. And it's both a negative look on you. Right. Either you acknowledge that there's your garbage mm-hmm. or if you think positive, it's all a lie and it's not real because you're, so it's, it's the same thing. So it's yeah. a real, so you think I see you that way, that way, which means that's how I see myself. Yeah. Right. That's... Okay. So I like yours. <laughs> Yours is a good one to reflect on. Yeah. I think I want to try to let go of I'm coming up across a bunch of different things, right? Oh. Oh, you got one? I got nervous. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, I gotta see if I can articulate this one. Right. It's so hard. Ooh, this is really good. Okay, I'm ready. It's kind of the same. But it's in a different um, area. Okay. So I'm counting it as different. Absolutely. What do you got? I think, I don't think I'm actually really excited about this because I recognize how not good it is. Um, I I think I have a perception and understanding of how you see your body. And like I'm talking just strictly physical attributes body. So I have a perception of what I think you see when you look in the mirror. Okay. And I want to let go of that. Okay. Does that make sense? This isn't how I see you when I look at you in the mirror, but it's how I think you are seeing you when you look in the mirror, not how I'm seeing you, right? So it's like Stephanie stands in the mirror and looks at herself. I think I have an understanding of what that Stephanie's thinking about her reflection. And it's probably influenced, not probably, it's obviously influencing and shaping some weird fucking alternate dimension dynamic of our relationship. Because I bet I, oh my God, am I just tripping out too much? Like this seems really important but yet it feels like it didn't land at all for you. Just because it didn't land for me doesn't mean that it can't land for you. Yeah, yeah. Like if you're like, this is actually really significant, then go for it. But I feel like I don't have to validate it and be like, that's right. That's a good one for you to go for. I still need that validation. That's right. That's a good one for you to go for. I love it. And you (laughs) should, that's, that's, that landed with you. And I think it's fantastic. And that's exactly what you should like. I need you to tell me how I need to, like, what is it that you're not understanding so that I can continue to explain it until you can understand it? (laughs) (laughs) Boy. Let me tell you about some of my labels and why that might take a really fucking long time. <laughs> well, this is stemming from one of my labels, so oh my I can't decide if this is the ADD oh or my the God. autism my, or my something's My headphones going on. unplugged at that moment because I was like, I'm done listening. <laughs> right, there's too much sensory input happening in this room right now. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed, but we're on I, some I got spectrum. myself tangled. I unplugged it in the wrong way too. So now I'm like tied to the chair and I'm going to start like spazzing out. I'm like, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. <laughs> okay. It's time to Kool-Aid man out. <laughs> okay, babe. We did um, a really good job. Do you, if you, if you want to continue this conversation later, because it's important to you to like, for me to understand and do this, I'm totally opting in that conversation. Okay. So okay. it, even like right soon as we're done recording, if you want to like, okay, babe, let's get into this. I'm opting in. Okay. okay. I think I may have uh, broke my brain now <laughs> in trying to question. I started breaking equipment. So. <laughs> yeah. So I think I pushed my get curious button too much when it comes to per, or, or labels and things like that. Right. So that's how you know good more. stuff happens when your brain tries to make you immediately forget when it men in black shoe and like pulls out the amnesia stick. You're like, you, uh, <laughs> you going out to the van trying to find the paper. <laughs> I freaking looked right on the dash. I knew I put it there. So I looked there and I'm like, well, where did I put it? Then it's not there. <laughs> exactly. Oh my gosh. Okay. That was funny. I was like, say that real fast. We went and got a application. And we had been in town for a very long time and I did not have the chance to go to the bathroom. And I was like, we're going to have an emergency. 
because <laughs> I, it was it was going to be an emergency and there was going to be a trail of evidence. I had to pee so bad. So when we finally got in the garage. And the, the, she's with our teenage son. Yes. Like it's an application for him. Like the, this is, I'm not a part of this experience. Oh, yeah, innocent over here. He's not a part, <laughs> he's not a part of the shit show. <laughs> Luckily it was a pee show. Anyways, and then I had to like stop. I pulled the van all the way in. And so you know how when you're like, you're home or you're in your body's like, finally I can go. Right. My bladder was like, weird to start releasing. I'm like, not yet. <laughs> so I pulled all the way in and then I remembered I had shit in the back of the van. So I had to pull back out and run around to the back to get the stuff out and then come back into the van and finish parking the van without running anything over. And then it's full of shit that we had like the dog stuff. We had the dog, we had the vet, the, all of the stuff. And our sweet son was like, I'll come back for the stuff and get it so you can go. So I took what I had and I was like making sure I didn't mess up his application by crinkling it. So I set it on the dash and then I thought I grabbed it <laughs> to take in as I'm making my way in the house, like holding on for dear life, Kegel in the tightest lock I've ever had, trying to not just pee everywhere. It was a triangle choke and on that. And I had to like go up the stairs and down the <laughs> hall and through the doors and find like most, there were so many doors. I think it's through like three doors to get into this bathroom and shut them behind me. Our so house nobody, is a labyrinth. <laughs> it is. And then finally, so I'm like, ah, oh, and then came out and Asher got all this stuff. So I'm like, that's great. And immediately, where did I put this application? I can't find it. I can't find it. Did it get thrown away? I look in the garbage. It's not there. It's probably in the van. I'll go look because that makes sense. I remember sitting on the dash. I look on the dash. It's not in the dash. So I'm like, okay, on the seats, under the seat. I look in the back of the van. I even crawled in the back seat and saw, did I put it in the trunk area? Nope. Didn't put it there. Did I sit it on the cooler where I put my bags the first time wow. I got out? Nope. Not there. Come back in, look in the house again. I'm like, I guess I have to go get him another one because I can't find it. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. I don't know where it went, what dimension it went. And then after. Like four hours later. Right. He says he's going to go look in the van. I'm like, I did. Don't and so, bother. Mom I already checked. I didn't say don't bother. <laughs> I know I'm being silly. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, if you already looked. And I said the thing. I'm like, buddy, just because I couldn't see it doesn't mean it's not there. I had you like, go look. <laughs> Two minutes later, he comes back in with it. It was on the dash, <laughs> like on the dash in front of the steering wheel on the dash, right where I put it, right where I looked, came back and it was just, what I don't know what just, happened. Like the beautiful little story you just shared. That's just a human thing. Is exactly why eyewitness testimony <laughs> <laughs> is pointless. <laughs> it's completely pointless. <laughs> oh no. But not, oh, eyewitness no. testimony has zero credibility. You're like, I didn't see anybody. <laughs> They're like, ma'am, he was right in front of you. Who? Because <laughs> you would I have, saw nothing. You would have testified on the stand that the application was not on the dashboard. I would not have looked. testified it. I would have said I didn't see it, but that doesn't mean shit. <laughs> right. And that testimony. Oh, you just like if I if nobody's you just I feel like you just totally invalidated oh, no. me. Like if ever I say anything, you're like, she doesn't know. Like you did that. Like I, nobody's like, I feel like I just got really invalidated. Oh, no. In my heart. I'm so sorry. It's OK. That's totally sucky. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I thought it was a funny story, right? We obviously it had a chuckle at it the other day and everything uh -huh. like that. And like, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make fun of it. I just got a little sensitive there at the end. I mean, what you said is totally funny, but I'm still activated. So I have a, <laughs> a thinner sensitivity layer. And that kind of okay. like got me a little bit. I'll give you a big hug. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. Let's wrap up. We've got a dog in and a And I have to pee again, so God knows where I'll put <laughs> yeah, anything. We, we all know what happens when Steph's got to pee. <laughs> Suddenly, alternate dimensions open up. <laughs> I, I think that's what happened. That's the only explanation. That's what I was going to ask is, do you think that when you were, like the timeline when you were in the van looking for uh -huh. the application, it wasn't there, but then something had shifted that when Asher walked into the garage, it was a different timeline where the application was still there. I think that it was the, like real possibilities here. Okay. So you These go ahead and label me with whatever you want. I'm cool with it. Dimension shift. Yes. 
Check. glitch in the matrix Check. i'm being a little funny there or like fairies moving it Check. and messing like i totally like so we many live times in the forest, right right i think that happens they come and they move stuff they play around they're mischievous and i think there's dimensions you know that we gotta happen. add a fourth right what's the fourth one fucking aliens nowadays babe what, what, right that's what it's gonna be now <laughs> how'd this happen fucking aliens i don't know what does what that guy said i'm not saying it's aliens right? <laughs> but it's aliens. if i was like 11 years old right now that would be everything right now right? this should be like why'd you do your homework i did the aliens <laughs> ate my homework i don't know what to tell you it was in my backpack <laughs> well i don't see it i know aliens <laughs> That's what I've been trying to tell you, you know, people all along. that's probably what's going to happen. They're going to blame aliens for everything bad that's ever happened. Right? That's what I would be doing if I was 11. Well, luckily. Yeah, I don't know who ate it. I think it was aliens. <laughs> you got chocolate all over your face. <laughs> <laughs> the aliens ate the cake. You've seen the news, Mom. And Alternate they, dimensions. And they painted alien, they, not alien, they painted <laughs> chocolate on my face. To, they set me up. <laughs> well, they got AI now. Oh, I don't my even goodness. know. Is this even a real video we're watching of ourselves? What if AI is just aliens? And they're like, it's aliens. Is it, do you think looking yeah. back, because we see the synchronistic timelines over, you know, as we reflect backwards, we can see the things that were correlated and connected. Mm -hmm. What if the, uh, the fact that we have AI, because AI basically happened this year, mm -hmm. even though what I mean by that is obviously it's been around for a really long time and Craig's not a technical person, so he doesn't really know, quote unquote, where, you know, blah, 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 AI really, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying like in the year 2023. It's when it became readily we'll, available we'll to the We'll go down in history as like when AI. It's like when the internet came out. Right. That's when AI, AI mm -hmm. happened is in mm -hmm. 2023. That's also the year that we learned that there were aliens. Do you think those two things might actually coincide with each other as in regards to significance? That maybe that's why the aliens are here now. What's that? Hear me out. Baby, we're going I down a fucking a conspiracy, conspiracy rabbit hole. <laughs> Hold on. It's getting bigger as Let's I'm elaborating this. it. Let's do this. So the thought was back in the 40s, the reason the aliens started showing up is because we started launching nuclear weapons. And they recognized that like on the global universal scale, right? The Guardians of the Galaxy were like, whoa, these motherfuckers got nukes. So they start showing up back then because they're like, what's going and on? And then they turned off some nukes at times. They're like, stop being idiots. And now the reason why aliens are showing up in this year mm -hmm. is because we've got AI. And AI suddenly went live. And when AI went live, it sent a fucking message out into the space that got picked up. And aliens are like, whoa, these motherfuckers just turned on AI. We got to get over there. Maybe. And that's why they're here now. Maybe. Do you think that they're just here now or do you think they've always been here? Well, I think they've always been here. Okay. But think about it. Like that's a real belief is that they started showing up in the 40s. Mm -hmm. But then there's also tellings of them from the past. So right. They've always been here. They've always been here. But we have these key moments where they come into the zeitgeist of culture. Uh -huh. And I think it's because of these key things that Probably. have a global. like when Catalyst. I say, yeah. A catalyst moment okay. that affects the universe. I it's can like get on that. A wave of energy gets shot yeah. out into space because of this, you know, nuclear bomb. <laughs> Well, the fact Massive that you're comparing AI to nuclear warfare is a little alarming. <laughs> Are you ready, though? Oh, God. Are you ready? Well, because we have to expand and see that okay. there is no good or bad. Okay. That there were positive things to nuclear weapons. Yeah. What? Right? <laughs> that um, there was actually some benefit that came from... I'm struggling with that. Exactly. It's a hard thing to question. Yeah. And here we are at a label again that needs to be looked okay. at. Okay. Get okay. really uncomfortable. I am uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We could go on and on apparently about Well, aliens. I think this should be our next episode. Conspiracies of, yeah. No, long ramblings about aliens. Okay. We've got a question this week. Where is that list? Uh oh, where'd it go? Did you throw it? No, I don't think I threw it. I've got it. Okay. Here we in go. In my brain. Okay. So each week we answer questions. You can call in those questions. The number is... 423-521-0355. And we'll answer your question on the podcast. <laughs> you can also text them. Yeah, I guess if you, you want to text. text them. I think um, you can text them to that number. Can you? No. No? It, no, that Don't number do that. only takes phone calls. Maybe only call it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Do not text. No text. Ain't nobody answering those. Ain't nobody got to uh, text. <laughs> no text. Text bad. Okay. This one this week. Here we go. Okay. How do you relearn trust? Because honestly, that's the core struggle I face. It's a simple question. I like that it's direct and straight to the point. How do you relearn trust? You want to take it first? Uh, no. No? <laughs> it's a tough one. Okay. Right? Okay. 
I think the first part of it, I guess I will take it first. There you go. I think the first part of it is you have to, like, how do I relearn trust? You have to go back and see all the ways that trust was affected over the course of your life, right? Because you have an idea of what trust is that was shaped based off of the experiences where trust was damaged. Mm -hmm. So if trust is this beautiful thing that makes you feel safe in the world because you trust somebody, right? With trust comes vulnerability and opening up and love. And so we have an, a definition of what trust is to us based off of those experiences where it was influenced and shaped both in negative and positive ways, of course, but oftentimes we're only focused on the positive ways and the ways that trust was broken for us. So we have to go back and sit with those parts. And in doing so, this is a beautiful metaphor because I can see like trust written out in a sculpture in front of me, right? And over the course of my life, that sculpture was like shaped and molded and sometimes it was cracked and it was hammered and slowly trust started to decay and fall apart and it was almost gone. And then slowly I had to go back and look and see where all that damage had occurred and how it was hurt and how it was injured and where it was, you know, held together in some points, but over time, just the ways that it was developed. And in doing so, I feel through the experience of the pain of all of that distrust and all of that suffering. But then I also can start to rebuild what trust means to me today. So I think that's what they need to do, right? Get really curious about how trust was taken away and how it was influenced and shaped. Mm -hmm. And that's how you learn to recreate it. And that's actually how you learn to redefine it, what trust now means to you. Not what it has meant and what it used to mean, but what does it mean to you now? And how can you hold things in your life and create relationships in your life that are going to enhance that definition of trust within you as opposed to hurt it and destroy it and over time break it down? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Anything else you want to add to it? I do. Um, definitely start there. Like that's like where do we begin right there? Um, I think the next step would be to find ways to rebuild trust within yourself, like trusting yourself, not like trusting us, but find ways to rebuild the trust that you lost in yourself where you have went against what you knew or like, because maybe you, you know, as a little child, you didn't have any other option than to go like to do what you knew you shouldn't do or other things because you were being forced in all kinds of different ways that those like, and you get to see that when you're reflecting back with how you said you need to go back and start to see all the ways that trust was broken, violation occurred. Um, so when you're seeing that and acknowledging that trust was broke, but you can rebuild it with yourself and starting small with little things that you do for you, little promises that you can keep to yourself and not big promises and not, not you know, 50 small ones, one small promise that you can keep to yourself every day and start to really show up for yourself in that way, whether it's, you know, doing the, the simplest way to say is like, maybe make your bed every morning and it doesn't have to be perfect. No military corners, just like you pull your comforter up. Like that counts, just something small. Maybe you're going to like implement flossing your teeth every night. Maybe you're going to implement um, drinking a glass of water before you have your coffee, before you start your day. Maybe you're going to implement um, wiping off your bathroom counter at the end of every shower, your mirror, just it's something, those are just ideas. Like just the point is that to keep it super, super small. So it's obtainable and not shaming yourself for it. And that you're, as you start to keep that and you show up for yourself, you're going to start to realize you can rely on yourself and you can trust yourself. And then have to look at your relationship with trust, what your expectations of trust is and let go of the expectation that trust equals permanence and that nothing is permanent and everything changes and something may change and that's not a break of trust. We change, we grow, things happen and being able to move with the flow of life and not feel like it means that you couldn't trust and that's really big and that's really hard but those are some of the steps that get you there and that trust not equaling permanence honestly is just one that I just figured out 
like right now. So it's, it's a journey and it takes a long time and I have to, that's, that's my next step is realizing that and figuring out how to sit with that. That trust does not equal permanence. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, again, you can email those questions to us. You can call them in. You can send them to send them to us on Facebook, whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. We love to get them and we love answering them each episode. Uh, anything else, babe? Uh, come hang out with us. Yeah, this come join month. the community. August nineteenth, we're doing breath come work and yes, cold plunges. Uh, come join the community. This month, we're discussing and going over how to get unstuck and trust your intuition. So if you're on your healing journey and you feel like you're just going in circles and you feel really stuck, this might be a great month yeah. to join and come learn how to get unstuck. The, uh, what else? Oh, coaching. Yeah, come. Do you the coaching. Us? Oh, the come, last. Go, go, go oh, ahead. Go ahead. No, go no. ahead. I was saying, come follow us on all the platforms. If you just follow us on Facebook, come check us out on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube and, you know, you know check threads, us out on all threads. Uh, like what Forgot we're, what we're using threads for right now, because who knows what everybody's using. I don't know, right? right? It's. It's a brand new social media platform. Anyways, Mm -hmm. uh, we're just putting like deep introspective thoughts on there, like stuff that, I mean, we both share on there. It's the type of thing where I think we're just, it's a fun, I don't need to. (laughs) Just come follow us. Come come hang out out with us. And if you are listening to this podcast, thank you so much. Thank you. you. Truthfully, just thank you. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye.